Hello there, I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now you've probably heard about these sort of CPU problems that we've got at the moment called Meltdown and Spectra. And so the question is, what is the fundamental problem with today's CPUs that it's causing all of these problems? Well, let me explain. Now, of course, you can read some really fantastic details on the net about the, the real nitty gritty of what the problems are. But really what I want to do is explain it to you in the simplest possible terms and try not to kind of get too deep into the technically, but to understand what this fundamental problem is and why really CPU design going forward, and that's probably CPUs we're going to see launched in 2019 onwards, are really gonna have to change the way they work at a very fundamental level. So we're gonna do this in four stages and let's try to get through this simply. Number one, a normal computer has a set of instructions that it follows. Load up this number from memory, add one to it, put that uh, result back into memory. And it's just basically a sequence of instructions and that's how computers work. Now I've got a whole video on instructions per cycle which will go much deeper into the things I'm going to talk about pipelines and decoding and all that. So if you want to watch that and I recommend you do, of course I would say that I'd recommend you watch all my videos. <laughs> okay but here's the link to that, you really should go and watch that. Now what happens is, is that when computers do these instructions we, it's actually pretty obvious that it doesn't do them just one at a time. It doesn't just load that thing and then wait around while the others are doing nothing. Because today's computers are so fast that actually the CPU can run faster than it can take to get uh, memory uh, information. So in that time it's waiting for something to come back from memory, it's actually just sitting there saying, mm, well, nothing to do now. So what they decided to do was they split up the execution of instructions into a thing called a pipeline. And the instructions come down the pipeline and each little bit of the pipeline is a tiny bit step closer to actually executing the instruction. And the kind of the, the easiest way to show that is that you basically do a fetch, fetch the next instruction from memory, you decode it to actually work out what it is, and then you execute and that would be a three stage uh, pipe, but actually the pipes can get much longer, you can get 10, 11, 12 stage pipes uh, in modern CPUs. Now as it's going along, it's becoming a, a step closer to actually executing the, the thing. And the, the actual instruction, when it's finally executed and the registers are changed and the state changes inside the CPU, that said that the instruction has now been retired. That means it's actually been all the way through that pipe, drops off the end of the pipe, and it's actually been executed, it's actually been retired. Now that's all great if programs just ran in a straight line. If they just kept running from one instruction, one instruction, two instruction, three, all the way, way down, and never ever jumped anywhere, never branched off to another place, that pipeline would be fantastic. The problem is computers branch all over the place all the time. It's one of their main things they do. For example, if you say, if you had a game and the little character was bouncing along and he gets to the edge of the screen, at some point you say, if he's at the edge of the screen, then do something different, you know, bounce him back the other way or he dies because he's dropped off the edge of the chasm. So at some point there has to be a thing in the program that says, if this thing has happened, then branch off here and do a different bit of code. Now, if you think about it, if the computer has been filling up its pipeline with all the instructions that are coming uh, ahead of it, and then suddenly the computer branches off. Now all those instructions in that pipeline are no longer needed. And that means they have to be emptied out of the pipeline, completely cleared out, and they call that having a bubble in the pipeline, like an air bubble stuck in your pipeline, because there's now a void where nothing actually happens and the computer has to wait around until it gets in the next set of instructions that are actually where the, um, the program jumped to. Now to try to reduce the number of bubbles, and reducing the number of bubbles is seen as one of the most important things you can do to increase performance, they have a thing called a branch predictor. Now the branch predictor says actually which way is the program going to jump. Uh, in three instructions time it's going to jump. Is it going to jump back up on itself to keep on repeating or is it going to jump off somewhere completely different? And the branch predictor tries to find out where the program is going to go and then in doing that it loads up the instructions ahead of it where it thinks the program is going to go and therefore when it does jump the right instructions are already in the pipeline and there's no bubble. Brilliant! But there's a problem with this approach. And that is, is that instructions can be executed or half executed, half baked, half traveling down the pipeline that are never used and they get discarded. But if that, that process of discarding them was completely atomic, was completely black a box, had no effect on the rest of the CPU, then it would be great, but it doesn't. Because in the moment that it has to fetch something from memory, 
even though the instructions never been executed it's preemptively it's kind of ahead of itself it's speculating what it needs it goes and gets that memory and it brings it in and in doing so it alters the cache now i've got a whole video on cache memory cache memory is fast memory that's at the same space uh, in the same space as the cpu so you can run very very fast and there's a link here to go and find out about cache memory and this is our fourth point the side channel access is that the cache can be altered and then doing some very clever stuff with timers, you can go and get the same piece of information again. And then if it took a long time, you knew what was there. If it didn't take a long time, you knew that it wasn't in the cache. And that basically means you can use this kind of a secret back door to examine the cache and take out things from there from instructions that were never executed. And because they were never executed, the checks on whether they're allowed to be executed, whether that memory is actually accessible or not, were never done. That means you can start trawling through the computer memory, other users, parts of the kernel, whatever you like, taking out passwords, taking out cryptic every key, taking out whatever you like, because the check to whether the program was actually allowed to do it or not is never done until the instruction is actually executed. And because the program, the instruction is never executed because it's all disregarded, then the, the computer said, oh, I didn't do anything wrong. I, I, I've not broken any access barriers here. I've not given you access to anything you shouldn't have access to because I never executed that instruction. But it did in its pipeline. And then by using these cache timing tricks, you can work out what was in the cache. And hence the whole memory becomes uh, 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 available to any program. And that's the fundamental problem. I'm Gary Sim from Android Authority. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Click that bell uh, icon so you get a notification every time we release a new video. And last but not least, please do go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.